Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Facebook Live with Breast Cancer Now. Tonight, we're going to be talking about complementary therapies and breast cancer. My name's Cassie. I'm one of the breast care nurses here at Breast Cancer Now, and I am really excited to be joined tonight by Emma and Mandy, who are complementary therapy specialists with Dimbleby Gantz Care, which is based at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital in London. So, thank you for joining us, guys, and I'll get you to introduce yourselves in just one moment. So tonight we're going to be answering your questions about um, complementary therapies and breast cancer and we've had a few questions in advance but if you do have anything you'd like to ask please do put your questions in the comments below we will answer as many as we can during the session live tonight anything that we're not able to answer anything that we don't get to we will answer in the comments um, through the next few days in writing so please do if you have anything you'd like to ask just post it below. If you would like to talk through anything in more detail or you'd like to speak to one of our nurses, you can give us a call on our helpline and that will be open again tomorrow from 9am and that is our number 0808 800 6000. You can also contact us um, through our Ask Our Nurse service and we'll link that below for you or you can get all the details through the website. So if there is anything that after tonight you think I want to talk through that in a bit more detail, you can give us a call and we'll answer or we'll signpost you where to go. Um, so before we get started, just to say, obviously this is a really big topic, so we will cover as much as possible, but just remember that everyone's different and what's right for some people might not be right for others. So if there are any therapies that you want to find a bit more about, we're going to post some resources below so that you can do some research, you can talk to your treatment teams, and then we'll try and answer as widely as we can, but just remember everybody's situation is slightly different. Um, so, without further ado, I will get the girls to introduce themselves. So, welcome again, Emma and Mandy. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Excited to have you both. Um, if we could start with you just kind of introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about what you both do, and really the first opening question is what we mean by complementary therapies. Go ahead, Mandy. Hi, Cathy. Um, so, I'm Mandy. I'm a traditional Chinese medicine acupuncturist. Uh, I've been an acupuncturist for just over 20 years um, and I've been working in cancer and palliative care for 10 years and I've been in Dimbleby Cancer Care at Guy's Hospital now for coming up to seven years. Fantastic. Hi Cassie, hi everybody, good evening. Uh, my name's Emma, I am one of the complementary therapists at Dimbleby. Um, I've been a complementary therapist for about 20 years now and I've spent the last 15 years specialising in cancer and palliative care um, and been working at Dimbleby with a fantastic team. Um, personally, my therapies that I practice are um, clinical aromatherapy, massage therapy, reflexology. Um, I also do scar massage um, and I facilitate relaxation um, and stress management workshops and groups. Um, so that's a big part of what we do as well is actually helping people to um, understand ways to look after themselves as well as accessing complementary therapy. Um, I'll give you a little overview of Dimbleby and how our service works, um, which might be different to how other cancer centres um, function, um, but we can tell you about us. Um, so at Dimbleby Cancer Cancer Care um, at Guy's and St Thomas's, we have a fantastic team um, that work integrated in the um, cancer care of, pa of patients that access the services here. So we're able to support um, patients to feel better um, by managing um, the different symptoms and side effects and stresses of their treatment with different therapies. Um, so we do that with the therapies that we've just mentioned um, and also Reiki um, as well is a big part of what we do. Um, so we work across the different um, settings, so we work in the inpatient wards, um, we have uh, services on the chemotherapy units and radiotherapy units and patients also come and see us in an outpatient setting as well um, as part of their treatment. So we do consider our service to be um, quite integrated, um, which is which is a really um, great benefit of how we work at Dimbleby. And that might not always be the case in different centres. But I think it's important to notice um, the difference between what we're talking about today, complementary um, therapy and alternative therapy. So we are complementary therapists. Um, so that means that the treatments that we offer actually work alongside people's medical care. So we're there to complement the medical care that they're getting. It's not an instead of. Um, so it's really important to be clear that the things that we're here to talk about are there to work alongside the, the usual treatments that you're having in your conventional settings. Um, and so anything alternative is actually outside of what we're able to discuss this evening. 
Absolutely, that's a really important clarity to get actually, we talk about complementary that goes, and that idea of sort of integrated um, care and looking at yeah. sort of the holistic approach yeah. I think is absolutely fantastic. So yeah, it's really brilliant Thank to you. clarify that. It's fantastic. also, um, we also go very much into beyond treatment and into cancer survivorship, yeah. which I think is really important, particularly in the breast cancer world, um, where there's adjuvant hormone treatments going on for many, many years after treatment. Um, we have, we have a big a big proportion of um, our patients are breast cancer patients, so a lot of people coming into our clinic, so we do understand the different symptoms that people are experiencing. And as Mandy said, um, even after treatment, the things that people uh, may be experiencing afterwards. Um, so we're, we're very aware of that and hope we can help give a bit of guidance on that today. Fantastic. That's brilliant. That gives us a really nice kind of overview to start with. And as you say, sort of complementary therapy, when people talk about it, it's quite often in a very general sense, talking around general well-being and of absolutely that sort of part of what you do. And as you say, that sort of well-being and stress management side of things. But it'd be really great to hear about sort of the specific symptoms and side effects that you guys um, are able to help to treat. And in breast cancer specifically, sort of the common things that you see and treat quite regularly. Yeah, um, so that's... I mean, first of all, the relaxation and well-being, it's such an important part of what we do. So before I go into specifics, I think, you know, many people on their cancer journey, they're stuck and they, they go through so many different treatments and they are quite rapid. And there's an opportunity to sit with their complementary therapist and a chance to be listened to and tell their story and improve their well-being. And when your well-being improves, that definitely has a positive impact on all your other symptoms. So I think that's a really important starting Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Um, but the specific, there are a lot of specific symptoms that we um, we help, and with acupuncture in particular, there's a lot of emphasis on hot flushes and night sweats, and the body aches, um, and those will happen through treatment and, and obviously afterwards into hormone treatment, and then there are the symptoms that are often quite common with lots of cancers. There's chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy. Um, and nausea, and fatigue, and sleeplessness and anxiety, and there's. There's a lot of um, uh, our therapists, it, it, it can depend on the person and what they want. So we can cover a lot of, each therapy can cover a lot of those. And mm. then certain therapies, it's uh, more specified. Fantastic. And Emma, is there anything from your side? Yeah, on? I think, and that's, we take, you know, when people are referred to our service, we take into account, um, you know, the symptoms that they have, and that may help us to triage to certain therapies, as Mandy said. So we take that into account. But it's also what the patient kind of has in mind as well, and what they are drawn to. I think is really, really important with all Absolutely. the different symptoms. But in terms of kind of how we help people coming for complementary therapy or, or accessing these kind of services, you know, we the feedback we get from our patients is that it gives people space to kind of connect with themselves again particularly at a time when they felt quite disconnected and that could be on a physical level you know to their body in general or maybe emotionally mentally spiritually so um, I think it does give people that kind of um, nurturing um, compassionate space that they might not be getting elsewhere which is really important no matter what therapy it is you know um, but also um, being able to um, provide comfort for the body and remind people that especially with the touch therapies as well that their body can be used for something pleasurable again um, you know in in this kind of environment when they've been poked and prodded in a medical way for so long so I, I think that's that's something that um, complementary therapies really does that other services aren't necessarily able to do and I wanted to um, just make clear to people if they're thinking about accessing certain therapies but they're a little bit worried about how it works or um, you know I can't lie on a couch in a certain way when you think of a traditional massage couch you know what, is, what does it look like what does it feel like you know you don't want to take off certain parts of clothing I just wanted to say to don't worry about those kind of things because when you access complementary therapies whatever therapy it is um, with a professional cancer care therapist that understands what's going on for you all of that will be taken into consideration and adapted to make sure that you're comfortable um, so don't kind of discount attending anything if it's if it's something you don't think you don't think about that's fantastic so I think that that worry of the unknown as you say can sometimes make people feel a bit nervous about approaching because they don't know sort of yeah. what's going to be expected. So yeah, having that open yeah. conversation with people at the start. And it's as you really, say that, sorry. yeah, no, no, go ahead, Mandy. So it's really normal that people are very nervous in their first appointment, particularly with something like acupuncture, where they know they're getting more needles and they've just yeah, been through so many true. needles. And often people are, well, I've been recommended this. I'm not sure it's for me or they want, you know, they kind of, they, they want to give it a go, but they're quite nervous. 
Um, by the end of their sessions, they always feel like they have come through a journey and they've come out the other end and they are, without a doubt, they are feeling a lot better and whatever symptom or whatever particular um, concern was bothering them um, has absolutely improved most of the time as well as their well-being and mm. they feel that those needles are not not mm. like the ones they're getting elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing that kind of patients have said is that um, because we're working on this kind of idea of symptom management and a holistic way it's the first time they've kind of been listened to in that way because many of the other professionals are obviously there to support them with the conventional care but the symptoms afterwards are not necessarily something that's um, that's able they're able to help with so the being listened to and kind of um, that their symptom is being tended to can be a really um, positive and empowering thing for the patient I think to be able to come and access these services. Fantastic. And I know, Mandy, I know you mentioned briefly around sort of acupuncture being used a lot for things like hot flushes. And we do Absolutely. find that menopausal symptoms is something that comes up a lot through our, our hotline and our, um, and our email service because it's something that so many people struggle with, obviously based on the chemotherapy. Some people have had to have their ovaries removed or on their hormone therapies. And we put quite young people into uh, medical menopause sometimes for breast cancer mm -hmm. treatment. So menopause... Hello everyone, welcome back. I do apologise for that slight technical hitch there. We are back with Mandy and Emma talking about complementary therapy. So we will roll back a little bit and just restart the last question. Um, I hope you're all still with us. I do apologise for the little technical error. So we will get going again. So we were just answering the question from Jessie that was around complementary therapies recommended for anxiety. Thanks, Cassie, and thank you, Jesse, for your question. So anxiety is definitely one of the most common um, reasons, I think, that people access complementary therapies. And um, I really think that all of them have a role in helping. So it's good to um, think about what it is that you might like um, to attend for, which therapy you're drawn to, whether that's a touch therapy, um, an energy-based therapy, or maybe acupuncture as well. Um, in my experience with the therapies um, that I practice, I really find good benefits benefit combining um, aromatherapy so the use of essential oils that come from plants and trees and fruits with touch therapies such as massage therapy or reflexology um, in the clinic room that's a really lovely combination um, having the kind of body tended to but introducing um, that element of scent and aroma um, which can be really really powerful and can actually be used um, beyond the therapy room as well because the essentially essential oils can be applied topically to the body um, but they can also have a really positive impact via inhalation. And that's one of the um, main routes for helping with anxiety as well. So when we smell um, a beautiful essential oil or a blend that's been made um, for us, it can have a really um, powerful effect on how we feel and how we manage anxiety. Um, and we do that actually um, with something called um, an aroma stick in our service. So if anybody's watching who's met us before, I'm sure they've come across one of these. Um, but if you haven't, it's like, it's a little um, personal inhaler um, that has a little cotton wick inside and we put the essential oils on a little cotton wick um, and then p people can take it with them um, when they're out and about when they're having those kind of anxious um, feelings as a self-management tool to use for themselves you just wave it under um, your nose um, you know we advise some kind of gentle breathing with it usually three breaths um, and it can have a really um, quick and positive impact on how you're feeling and if you think about if you've had a beautiful blend used um, during a massage um, in a therapy room and then you use that same blend um, in the aroma stick later on it's a really powerful link with your um, sense of smell and your um, memory association and your feelings so it can take you back to that feeling of relaxation so it's a really lovely thing um, to be able to use um, you know there's loads of essential oils that, that would be helpful the main thing is that you enjoy it and um, we know that some of them are um, very sedative and calming so obviously lavender is probably the most well-known essential oil and widely researched and we know um, in breast cancer particularly it has been found to be helpful um, with patients before they've gone in for surgery um, and through chemotherapy in, inhaling lavender can be helpful um, so yeah it's about finding um, the oils that you enjoy um, and using them in that way for yourself can be really positive positive. Um, and it's nice to have a tool that you're using you know that's um, that yeah. means that you can use it as and when you need it's, it's kind of psychologically empowering for people which will really help in those feelings of anxiety absolutely it's taking that control back isn't it yeah. sort of knowing that this is my coping mechanism and i can choose when to use it that's fantastic yeah, that's great and mandy uh, have you got anything to add for acupuncture yeah so acupuncture obviously as as emma said you know all therapies will help 
somewhat with anxiety acupuncture is very much a mind body medicine so you know every person will be diagnosed individually and the combination of whatever symptoms or whatever patterns throw up will include how they are in their mind as well and that'll be that'll be dealt with through their treatment um we actually um like to help people with self-help techniques as well and one of the one of the few advantages of the pandemic is that because i was no longer able to treat anybody we were able we then decided to record some acupressure videos to try and send out to our patients um and it's really lovely to be able to so we i think we've sent this as a resource for you um if you want to send out but it's uh if you can teach someone the self-help of being able to massage their own acupressure points to help relieve anxiety mm. um you can go through a sequence of 10 or 20 minutes on a daily basis it's a really um wonderful resource to be able to have that wherever you are and wherever you go to be able to help yourself and it costs nothing it's free yeah, it you know and, pe- and people don't realize you're doing it you're the kind of techniques we were teaching people so on the hand um you know really brilliant self-help techniques you could just be sitting on a train or waiting for a hospital appointment no one realizes what you're doing it's quite subtle um, but can be really really helpful in those situations when you need it and that's fantastic so that's so accessible to mm. anybody and so sort of when you're going through a cancer diagnosis some of the anxiety is sort of around that loss of control and being able to give that back to people to actually this is something you can do for yourself I think that in itself is amazing it's like putting things in your toolbox so you so whether it's through cancer treatment or just life stress as well these are techniques that people are going to take with them you know um forever so um we really hope that people do find them helpful fantastic and actually sticking with um acupuncture Mandy so Kate has also asked whether acupuncture can help with long-term peripheral neuropathy Yes, um, so that's a really interesting question actually. So I see, and we treat a lot of chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy, um, and on the whole, it's really successful. It's one of the few treatments that does work. It does take longer for someone that's had it for a long time. Mm-hmm. There is a difference between recently um, recently acquired chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy and those that have had it for a very long time. Um, I know from my own practice that people that have had it a long time will get results, but it's going to take longer. Right. Um, it's a much harder thing to shift. I went actually, because I, I thought about that question, I went and had to look at some of the research to see what was out there. And there, there's been some recent um, evidence that looking at, well, looking at groups of people from anything from two months to 11 years, um, yeah. and people are still getting results, even though it That's didn't amazing. necessarily break it down. Um, it, there is a chance you'll get a success. There is there are always some people that don't respond and with every treatment whether that's complementary therapy through to any other treatment there are some people who don't respond and if you've had it a very long time there is a higher chance that you might not respond but I see enough people that it does that it does make a difference and I think for a lot of people it's getting that improvement isn't it to bring something to a manageable level absolutely and the same goes as we were talking before we talk a lot about self-help techniques yeah um I use um with acupuncture there's also heat therapy something mm-hmm. called moxibustion or it's a heat lamp and heat is really really good for peripheral yeah. neuropathy so I'm often teaching people to use heat on their hands and feet teach them exercises um, teach them ways to try and manage and cope and help increase that feeling and that's uh, or re- in, yeah increase feeling in their hands and feet um, and it, it, just those those small amounts of self-help along with treatment often makes the difference it, it makes a difference being between being able to cope and feeling like they're not able to cope yeah and what sounds fantastic from what you're both saying is it's not necessarily about that specific treatment it's yeah. there's such a sort of wider sort of holistic approach around it sort of how this is used in conjunction with that just sort of self-care time and sort of taking that time out as well think, so that's yeah. fantastic I think people haven't oft, when they come into our clinic room um, they haven't often thought about that time how important it is for themselves yeah. until they've had the treatments and then even they, we might have a set session a set number of sessions with them but it actually helps them to reflect on how important that time is or yeah. that that technique is or whatever it is and they take it um, on kind of um, throughout life so yeah I absolutely think it helps yeah. people to think in that way holistic actually, way when they finished when they finish those sessions they've got stuff to take with them as well that's one of the joys of having it available in the NHS as well Um, it's not available at every cancer centre unfortunately but you know we're able to offer it to people that wouldn't necessarily be able to afford it otherwise so um, if if you're able to kind of try some things out for free I'd really recommend having having a go brilliant and actually that leads into so Jeanette has asked um, around access so we may 
we'll cover that now actually because that leads right. in quite nicely so Jeanette said is there a list of complementary therapists anywhere or specifically how can breast cancer patients access therapies for people with breast cancer in a safe and secure environment so that they you know know they feel safe and where to find it it's a lovely so, word, big question. question yeah Andy, do you want to take that one yeah, so I think the most important thing with all therapies is you go to see someone who's um, a member of their professional body because then you know that they have been suitably trained and they'll know what they're talking about. So for acupuncture, that's the British Acupuncture Council in the UK. Um, every country will have their own uh, professional body. And for complementary therapies, it's the... Sorry, Emma, help me out here. Well, well we have a, a kind of self-regulatory body, which is um, the Complementary and Natural Healthcare Council. So that's who we advise people are registered with to work in our environment um, because you know they're trained to a specific standard but they're and that that's actually a an organization that's there to protect the public um, rather than being a professional membership organization um, but yes the complementary and natural health care council is who we're registered with and we can oh, paste the links for those councils below in the comments so that people will be able to access them so there's always the private practitioners that will be registered and, and they will be the right person to go see. But I think it's really important for many people to also look and find out about their local hospital yeah. or the local cancer charity or um, there's lots and lots of resources where people are offering complementary therapies, yeah. um, often, um, often for free actually. And it's worth finding out because you also know that people at those relevant charities will be suitably trained as well. Absolutely. Can we ask so yeah, a lot of the larger cancer centres will have like Guys and St Thomas' services like Dimbleby, but charities like Maggie's Centres um, is one of Macmillan. them. Macmillan. yes, as well, mm -hmm. have sort of access for people that don't have that through their hospitals because we do know not everybody has access to complementary therapy through Absolutely. the hospital. That's right, and I think the Cancer Care Map probably has a list of most of the yeah. big charities UK-wide, actually, so that's... Um, that's a good starting point. Absolutely. And the Cancer Research UK website as well has a big list of the regulatory bodies on their website. We've got a few of them. If you look at the, the complementary therapy section of the Breast Cancer Now website, we've got a few listed. But actually, we link out to um, CR UK because they have a really, really good page of all the sort of different regulatory bodies and different places that you can access them. That's and fantastic. as you say, Cancer Care Map as well, they have a local list you can put in your postcode and find out all of the cancer services, um, not just complementary therapies, but talking therapies or different cancer um, centres like Maggie's, so you can mm. find out what's in your area. So that's a really good resource as well. Because I, I think, you know, in terms of looking for private therapists, and we often get patients that have come in um, and they have been really disheartened because they've been turned away from a high street yeah. spa or, or something like that, which um, I can understand can feel really difficult at the time, but it is the right way if the patient, if the the therapist is not trained in cancer care so that I think that's the um, that's what Mandy and I are really keen to kind of get across is that make sure that if you are going through treatment or it's, it's soon after treatment you know you, or you have any kind of lasting effects um, that you are seeking a, a therapist that is understands the treatment that you've had and how it's affected your body um, and yourself personally because we do have to make adaptations so there are things with the touch therapies um, you know whether it's the, the pressure um, the time spent on the massage you know an hour and a half massage sounds lovely but actually a 20 minute massage is all all that really you need during that time of treatment that's enough for your body at that time yeah. um, so we do ad adapt things in that way we won't work over certain areas of radiotherapy you know recent surgery obviously tumor sites as well um, and I know Mandy will have her own um, adaptations to her treatment yeah, that's right. So acupuncture really is safe to have during treatment and after treatment. Sometimes people are concerned about having acupuncture in the needles yeah. whilst they're going through treatment. And on the whole, it is absolutely safe and recommended, particularly you know, for some of those immediate side effects of um, chemo, such as nausea or fatigue um, and, and uh, uh, chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy. Um, but it's really, really important to uh, go to see someone who is suitably trained because I would never needle into an arm that's had um, lymph removal. Uh, yeah. That's really, really important. Um, you'd obviously never needle into any tumour site or any scar tissue. Uh, the beauty of acupuncture in Chinese medicine, there's always a point somewhere else in the body that mm, you can use right. to do the same job. So if someone is particularly um, weak or um, they've got a low immune system, I might just put needles in their ear, I might not use their body at all. Um, if someone's uncomfortable, you know, there's, there's lots and lots of um, options available. But you, so yes, it's very safe, but you need to make sure you're going to see someone who's suitably trained. 
So would you say it's important for people to feel confident to ask? Sort of Absolutely. right at the beginning, say, have you worked with people with breast uh, cancer? 100%. Yeah. And often on these, um, you know, uh, bodies that we're recommending, um, you can search and it, it, for the therapist and it will say they're kind of specialist areas as well. So you might kind of get that sense before you contact people, which would be a good thing. And, and also, I think it extends to um, the kind of techniques that people might be doing for themselves at home. And I'm thinking of things like essential oils, which you can buy off the shelf, you know. Um, and so just making sure that you are getting guidance before starting to dabble in those things, even mm. though it's always with good intention because there are some companies that may advise things that aren't safe for the general public um, let alone people going through um, cancer Absolutely. treatment so things like making sure we're using it in the correct way um, just get the advice of a professional therapist before you have a go. Absolutely and if people aren't sure how to access that advice they can always speak to their breast care nurses who if they can't answer will have access hopefully to the people that can answer those questions. Pharmacists can be a fantastic resource yeah. as well and um, so yeah lots of ways that you can make sure that things are safe for you but it, yeah it's important to ask the questions and make sure that you're confident before trying to think you can always talk to your treatment teams as well we always recommend to people talk to your surgeons talk to your oncologists because again if they don't have the answers they would have access to the experts like yourselves to be able to ask mm. and seek that guidance yeah, absolutely fantastic and then we've had a question in from jill who asks about reiki and says does reiki help if so how she says i'm training to be level two so she's currently doing reiki training from the sounds of it Absolutely. So um, neither Mandy nor myself are Reiki practitioners, but we do have some wonderful therapists in our team that are. Um, and we absolutely know that it can really benefit uh, many of our patients and breast cancer patients in particular. You know, thinking of those kind of um, anxiety, stress, um, sleep, Reiki, um, which is more of an energy based uh, modality where the therapist may place their hands above or, or on the patient. Um, it's it's very kind of non-invasive in, in that kind of way and you don't have to take any clothing off and it's all very relaxed but it really encourages the body um, and the mind to have a sense of balance and I think it induces deep deep relaxation for the people that access it so with sleep um, and anxiety and stress it can be really helpful and with fatigue and pain as well um, so there are some studies that support that but particularly for in our team's clinical experience um, we do find that Reiki can be a lovely therapy for people to have if they're feeling uh, maybe they're not wanting any more kind of hands-on they're just wanting to, to chill it can be a really nice one to receive. That sounds fantastic so I guess you and do good. there probably are quite a lot of people going through treatment that may well not want that hands-on yeah. treatment they yeah. may have a bit of a barrier with that so knowing that there's therapies they can still access Absolutely. if you're not ready to have people touching your body is fantastic. Yeah, and sometimes um, Reiki practitioners will be um, offering other modalities as well. So they could combine it with something. So you may have some aromatherapy or maybe some reflexology with Reiki, which is a lovely thing. And I think in our team where we're often multi-skilled, combining those therapies, um, whatever they may be, it's like creating a bespoke you know treat tailored treatment for that patient which can feel really yeah. really lovely and we might not decide what we're doing together until you know they walk in the room and how are you today and you, you kind of you pick off the menu for what's kind of suiting you today and so um you get a really lovely experience from a multi-skilled therapist i think yeah thank you and you've touched on an area there that's actually really really another common question that we get a lot is around fatigue that is one of those um symptoms that seems to affect everybody going through probably all cancer treatments but breast cancer treatments being our area we hear a lot of people either during treatment post treatment people with secondary breast cancer are obviously on treatment for a long time fatigue can be a really really difficult one to live with day to day it really affects quality of life and obviously there's not a lot of, of traditional treatments for it but I'd have thought complementary therapies is an area that can really help people with the quality of life side Absolutely. So we spend a lot of time working with people with um, cancer related fatigue. And, you know, as I think we've said this for pretty much every symptom. It really all of our modalities can help with that. And it really is depending on what I, I kind of often think that there is a right therapy for each person. Mm -hmm. And it's about finding that therapy for them. But going back to our self-help techniques, um, we've been part of a much wider resource pack within Guy's Hospital for Cancer Related Fatigue. So there's sections from uh, the dietitians, the OTs, the physios. We've got a big um, complementary therapy section where we've got some guided meditations and some Qigong exercises and some acupressure videos. And that's just a fantastic resource that we send out to just about everybody. And I, I think we've sent this one to you too. Um, what I often say 
to when I'm when I'm seeing a patient is don't try and do them all have mm. a look look yeah. at the one that, that most suits you so even though obviously I'm an acupuncturist they're seeing for me for acupuncture don't necessarily think that the acupressure is the one for you have a look at them all pick one and really try and do it for a, every day for a couple of weeks or a month yeah. because it doesn't it's not one day you can't yeah. do a bit of acupressure or a bit of qigong and think okay it hasn't yeah. worked it's yeah. something you've got to try and integrate into your life yeah. and it will start making a significant difference to so try and give it 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes a day and just go with it. That's very much the same as with sort of meditative practice, isn't it? You have Absolutely. to actually practice, you have to work at it. Absolutely, and, and then exactly. With like with anxiety, you know, it, it's it's really hard to access if you're if you're if you're in it. It's really hard to access that if you haven't practiced it before. So I always with um, encourage people if they're um, they're suffering with anxiety to practice these things perhaps when they're not um, feeling so stressed, so that when the yeah. time comes, um, it's easier to access it. So I think the little and often is always really good. That's really good advice, actually, getting sort of practicing with techniques when you're not in that moment and they're more accessible when you are. People are are often given, you know, the exercises to do, whether it's from their, you know, physios and things like that. So just adding kind of something on the end of that is always a nice time to do it. Uh, Make it like like brushing your teeth, you know, it's something you're going to do every day. Fantastic. Um, and we have had one more question in that um, it's a little bit specific. So do say if you are not able to answer this one, but um, it's been asked what type of complementary therapy is best for people who've had a DEP breast reconstruction. And just for anyone that doesn't know what that is, that's uh, breast reconstruction using your own tissue from your abdomen to recreate the breast area. So it's, it's quite a, a large operation. And obviously the DEP tissue is taken from the stomach, so there can be wounds at the stomach, there's a scar there to heal, and also the scar around the breast, but it gives a very sort of natural breast reconstruction because it grows and shrinks with your body. So it's quite a a large operation, but it's quite a common one for people to choose, just in case anyone was wondering what a DEP actually is. So is that one that you're able to answer? Thank you for the question. I mean, obviously, it would depend on on what the the person was kind of presenting with, what their symptom would be and what they wanted from the treatment. But um, from what you've said, I mean, it makes me think that I do support a lot of patients um, following surgery with scar treatment. So scar massage, it's something that um, the massage therapist within our team, we've done some specialised training in and has been um, really, really great, um, not only in the treatments to be able to um, help people to connect with their their scars and their surgery sites um, which is is really powerful on a psychological and a a physiological level um, but also give them self-massage techniques to go home with so um, there is um, there is some kind of specialist um, scar massage therapy available um, so that might be something to kind of look at if you're having problems and that could be to the breast or to the abdomen area um, where people are having kind of any issues afterwards Um, not everybody will of course um, but for some people that do have some numbness or the tingling or, or pain sensation or kind of tightness in the tissue afterwards that can be um, really lovely and it's it's a very gentle approach that we've um, we've been trained in and I guess the other thing we don't know from this this lady is um, sort of how far post-surgery as well so obviously Mm. in the very early days after surgery as everything's healing you've got to let everything heal first before thinking about any sort of therapy so always sort of check with your team check with your nurses whether they're happy for you to to um, have any kind of sort of input on the scars and we say that even with sort of home massage so we do recommend massaging scars to keep them supple but you know, make sure you check with your teams that everything's nicely healed. And I would say, I think that question's coming from Linda. Linda, if you had sort of specific problems you were having with your scars that you wanted to talk through, you can always, as we said earlier, give us a call and we'd be able to sort of direct you a little more specifically, but hopefully. It sounds like that kind of sort of scar therapy as well. It wouldn't just be for people with reconstruction, people who've no. had simple mastectomy yeah. as well. Absolutely, any any scars. So yes, Perfect. but there are, I think you can do kind of specific oncology um, scar training, which um, which Amazing. is really beneficial. But sure, they would absolutely need sign off from their surgical team um, before going ahead with anything like that. And then from an acupuncture point of view, obviously there's be there'd be no needling into any scars at all. But you know, acupuncture again, it's I, I often say to people, obviously nothing's going in the needle. Um, it's it's giving messages to your body to heal itself. So it's a it, it, if someone came to see me with those kind of scar tissues and they that's what they were looking for help with, it would be about helping their body to heal itself, mm. helping speed up the process, helping with the well-being. Fantastic, that's amazing. And I think we've got through all of the questions that um, we've had come in. It sounds like, you know, so much of it is around sort of finding what's right for that person, for that individual. Mm-hmm. Is that what you'd sort of say, sort of everyone kind of, if there's any therapies that people have heard and think, oh, I think that might be for me, just go and research it a little bit more, 
find out a bit more, talk to, to professionals. And um, is there, I know you mentioned the regulatory bodies, um, what's the best way for people to find out a bit more about different therapies? Well, if you look on the, if, if, you, if it was acupuncture in particular you were looking for, then um, then the British Acupuncture website it's will have a lot place. of information. Um, but as, you know, as, as you, even Breast Cancer Now and all the charities will all have a section on complementary therapy. Um, even our website at Dimbleby has some information. So there's yeah. a lot of information out there, but just make sure you're going with a good source. Perfect. I was going to say, I think Breast Cancer Now are releasing some information yes, shortly. Yes, I was going to come on to that in a moment. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so um, obviously we do have our complementary therapy pages on the website. Um, we've recently updated those with the help of Mandy and Emma, among some other fantastic reviewers. So we are just waiting for that to go live on the website. So over the next sort of few weeks, few months, you should see our new complementary therapies, very much updated version on the website. So that will link into a lot of these resources. Um, we're hoping to link into some sort of practical apps on mindfulness, some sort of yoga techniques. So lots of different things that hopefully people can access on a practical kind of how do I get a bit of experience, see what I like side. And as I say as well, the CRUK um, Cancer Research UK website has a fantastic section around complementary therapies as well, and they list a lot of the regulatory bodies. We will link some of them below that we've talked about tonight and some of the resources you guys have mentioned as well. So um, people that were asking around sort of access, um, hopefully you will be able to get some of that information in the comments below afterwards. Um, Guys, before I close everyone off and say goodnight for the evening, is there any sort of final thoughts that you'd both like to give to anybody that's thinking about trying complex therapies for their breast cancer symptoms or just for some sort of well-being post-treatment or during treatment? Go for it. Give it give it a go. Get the professional advice, get professional support and um, go with an open mind and an open heart. And um, yeah, be guided by, by what you what you feel your body and your your kind of your your mind and your soul need. Fantastic. Yeah. And, I, and the only thing I would add to that is I always say to people, if you're looking to go somewhere, pick up the phone, have a chat. Someone's always going to be happy to speak to you, get some reassurance and then go for it. <laughs> Perfect. That's amazing. Thank you so much, guys. And um, as we say, you know, if you've got any more questions, anything you want to talk through in more detail, you can always give us a call on the helpline and we can direct you on to all these resources. So our helpline number is 0808 800 6000 and that's open again from 9 o'clock tomorrow, um, 9 to 4 on weekdays and 9 to 1 at the weekend. So we can help direct you to some of these resources that we've talked about or talk through sort of anything that's triggered for you, anything you've brought up personally from what we've talked about tonight, you can always call us to talk through in more detail. So I'd like to say a huge thank you to both of you, Emma and Mandy, for joining us tonight. It's been fantastic and so many more sort of therapies and treatments that we could have talked through, but yeah. hopefully people will be able to go and feel empowered to feel right. brave enough to go and try what's right for them. I'd like to thank everyone that's been watching as well. Um, if there are any comments that we've not seen, that we've not answered, we will answer them in writing over the next few days, as I said. Um, and please do look out for our next Facebook Lives, which will be advertised over the next few weeks. So thank you, guys. Thank you so Great. much thank for having you. us. Thank you for all you do. And have a <laughs> lovely evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.